everybody, Uncle Steph here. So, what is vibe coding? Is it really something super different? Should you be concerned about it? Should you learn it? Let's jump in. So vibe coding is just basically using an AI bot, whether it be GPT or Claude or whatever AI you want to use to write code for you and to build apps. So people, you can go look it up on the web. You can watch people vibe coding. All it is is people giving directions to AI bots as it writes out boilerplate code for you. It's pretty cool. It's pretty impressive. But uh, number one, you still have to have very good knowledge of what you are doing. A noob, a beginner, will not be able to vibe code anything uh, substantial, if anything at all, really. Because, as any experienced developer knows, you have to understand the context, right? So you can have your AI write a bunch of React code, but do you know if you need to learn, use React for your project, right? You have to have a certain amount of knowledge to know when to use React, for example. So let's say you decide that you're going to use React. How do you deploy it? Where do you deploy it? How do you configure it? So when you watch the Vibe coding, and it's pretty cool, you see the AI agents, they're writing out all the code, and they're being directed. And a crucial aspect of this, besides the deployment path, is that the developers also are looking over the code and they're knowing where to fix things, where to put things here and there. And I'm watching some Vibe coding videos using libraries that I haven't used. And I wouldn't know, for example, even though I've been coding for decades, I wouldn't know exactly uh, where in certain examples with a particular library, we'll say, for example, let's say I've never used React. I wouldn't know where to put things or what to look for if, the, if things are out of place or what to fix. But if you know what you're doing, like a, a foreman or like a, a boss, you can go, or a coach, you can go, okay, do this. Okay, no, that's good, but put this here. That's good. And the AI is doing it. So you as a developer are directing the AI as a senior might direct um, mid-level developers on a job. When I watch Vibe coding videos, it just kind of reminds me when you deploy a framework. Let's say you are an ExpressJS user or React user. When you know the library, you can just start going bing, 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 putting the templates into place. Uh, all the boilerplate code is all uh, created for you in the framework or the library. So if you know what you're doing, you just put everything together very quickly and away you go. It's just like perhaps when you use Bootstrap, for example. People still use Bootstrap. That's a front-end um, framework for UI development. And uh, you start using Bootstrap, and, you know, bing, 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 bing. You put things together very quickly. Whereas when Bootstrap came out, prior to Bootstrap, uh, writing the CSS code to create a, uh, a fully flexible web framework, a web front end, rather, it uh, was much more work, was much more work. So when you see people doing the vibe coding, it's kind of reminiscent of implementing a library for the first time or implementing a framework where all this boiler code, boiler plate code is created for you. Again, that said, for you to effectively use Bootstrap, which is a front end a library for web UI, you still needed to know and understand web coding. And for you to use to vibe code uh, with any particular AI, you're going to need to know and understand the environment. So what's the strategy for people new to coding? And what's the strategy for people who are already pro developers who have not used AI? So the obvious thing you have to do if you're new to coding, you learn your fundamentals so that you understand the landscape. I always recommend the web because it gives you the widest range of job opportunities. You can work for small business, medium-sized business, big business. You can do freelance. You can get a job. You can do your own startup. The web is like the foundational environment for development these days. I'm not saying you can't get good jobs doing C++ device coding or something, but I'm just saying it gives you the widest range of possibilities, especially if you want to go to freelance and entrepreneur route. If you want to freelance, forget about C++. You want to freelance, Swift, is, uh, which is iOS development, much more rare. For every Swift job as a freelancer, there's probably 1,000, 5,000 web-based freelance gigs. So anyway, if you're starting out, Learn the foundations of code. I recommend the web stack. 
and then you jump into AI. You could also use AI to help you along the way as you learn. That said, uh, and of course, I am biased. I have my own interactive platform that teaches you the five key languages of the web stack faster than any other platform out there, period. I've been working with schools for 14 years. Links below. You can get my full web stack course for 39 bucks, or you can go with the full Steph experience with um, my mentoring program. You check that out as well. Instead of spending $10,000 or $15,000 on a boot camp, you can get uh, my mentoring program which I think will give you better results for far less. If you are an experienced developer and you've been reluctant to jump into AI, bad move, learn AI. Uh, it is not a threat to programming. It just changes the game. Just like when React came into the game, it changed the way a lot of people did front-end uh, web apps. They jumped into React and then later on Vue. So don't look at it, it as a threat, just look at it as the new level. It's a new level, of new layer to work with. You become far more productive. And what you'll see right away is that, yes, using AI and coding is helpful, very helpful, but you're going to see right away it's not replacing you. It's just speeding up the process. The analogy I like to use is you can be a carpenter and use hand tools, or you can be an experienced carpenter and use power saws and power drills and power sanders, I guess and get the job done much faster. But you still need to be a carpenter. There you go. That's the story. So I hope you found this video useful. My name is Steph. Some people call me Uncle Steph. You can check out what I do in the links below. If you have any comments about this video, please feel free to comment below. I will answer some comments. If you want to consult with me, check out the links below. And that's pretty much it. We'll talk soon.